sometimes you find something in a video game that makes you want to... This is why they were diving into eight of the creepiest discoveries ever found in video games. Part 3. Brought to you by Mana, the banking app made for gamers where you can earn perks and points by simply buying and playing video games with a first of its kind reward system. Spend the points you earn on the app to gain even more gamer focused products and rewards. Download the app on iOS or Android today by scanning my QR code or clicking on the link down below. Red Dead Redemption 2. Thanks to Wonton Bagel 670 for submitting this mystery on oddheader.com. When it comes to Red Dead, there's of course no shortage of creepy discoveries in Rockstar's biggest game to date, such so as the latest mystery I covered from the game that had me making human sacrifices to figure out what the hell is up with this unexplained pagan ritual site. Red Dead Online has managed to make the game even stranger, as when Wonton Bagel was playing the game with a friend, a strange occurrence happened that still haunts them to this day. As during this cutscene on the mission Where Your Morals Lead You, there was suddenly a flash of light that doesn't normally happen in the scene. And after the screen cleared, the character's skin was pitch black, their hair turned white, and their eyes appeared to be glowing. Whatever's going on here, it appears to be so rare that Wonton Bagel's video is currently the only known footage we have of this creepy occurrence. Though this isn't actually the only instance of players finding such an unnerving sight in Red Dead Online, as players have also reported seeing mysterious corpses with the same exact green glowing eyes and bluish skin. Though moonshine is a hell of a drug, but what the purpose of the glowing eyes represents remains unclear, as many thought it was a teaser for an upcoming Halloween update, but nothing has appeared in the Halloween events that resemble the glowing-eyed beast. It's hard to say what exactly is going on here, but if these glowing-eyed corpses were supposed to be unintentional, I'm gonna need some serious convincing on that one. That would be one hell of a freaky glitch. Call of Duty Black Ops. Thanks to Killer DWTB and Dinkley for submitting this mystery on the Oddheader website and Discord. Call of Duty Black Ops is the seventh main installment in an extremely popular military first person shooter, featuring a campaign you expect in the 1960s during the Cold War to prevent chemical warfare from reaching the US. Which is why it seems strange when Killer DWTB made a discovery in Call of Duty Black Ops that doesn't seem to fit the setting at all. Killer DWTB says they were playing the mission Revelations, when after Mason freed himself from the chair, they walked into the next room, approached this door, and waited a while when suddenly they heard what the they heard what sounded like an enormous beast behind the door waiting to be unleashed but there doesn't appear to be any non-humans that ever appear in the mission as far as anyone knows well, I'm not going in there. And it appears this mysterious growling isn't the only unnerving discovery to be found in Black Ops, as Dinkley let me know of another creepy discovery right on the main menu. As when some players booted up the game, rather than this TV screen that is normally on the menu listing game options, there was instead this strange clock in its place that was synced to the player's console's internal clock. The clock just kept ticking as players tried to figure out what was happening, with no way to get rid of it until they reset the game. Since the clock discovery was first reported in 2011, no one has been able to figure out what causes it to appear. In fact, in the last decade, only three people have ever managed to get footage of the occurrence. What this clock is ticking down to is still unknown, but since the mysterious creature is actually only in the next room over, maybe it's better we never find out. Vigilante 8. Thanks to Ramona Zero for submitting the discovery on onheader.com. Vigilante 8 is a vehicular combat game released in 1998 for the PlayStation N64 and Game Boy Color. The game is pretty much what you expect of a 90s vehicular combat game a la Twisted Metal, as you band together with a group known as the Vigilantes to stop a rival game from destroying and taking over the oil industry. However, Ramona found some assets on the PlayStation standalone demo disc that suggests there's something else going on in Vigilante 8 that you otherwise wouldn't expect of this game. As on the demo disc, Ramona found several unused audio tracks in the data, including a track 7 that doesn't appear in the final game, which I confirmed for myself with an actual copy. The track plays over 5 minutes of a creepy voice whispering inaudibly over some creepy background music that sounds fit for a serial killer's ASMR. The only conclusion one can draw from this is that the demo was haunted, but the demons were exercised before the game's official release. Why these whispers straight from hell were left on this disc is anyone's guess, but perhaps it was cut because they couldn't meet Satan's royalty demands. Teosita. Thanks to Cybel for submitting this mystery on the Oddheader Discord. Teosita is a horror puzzle platformer game from the independent Brazilian developer Vicentor. Released in 2021 as a sequel to their earlier game Tamashi, a nightmarish game I covered before in my video 7 video game discoveries from hell. Vicentor describes Teosita as a metaphysical aptitude program, as they designed the game to play like a series of parapsychological tests, aka the study of psychic and paranormal psychology. Like its predecessor, Teosita is full of secrets and creepy easter 
Easter eggs, including a strange discovery still haunting the very few players who have managed to experience it. As normally, before the game begins, you're placed in a room where you can get on a computer and begin the game. However, on extremely rare occasions, when opening the game, some players have been met with the secret screen of a strange looking Medusa headed creature with its intestines spilling out and surrounded by retro styled PC monitors. A sinister low growl plays during the scene, which when sped up in reverse reveals that it's actually multiple layers of audio at different speeds saying please save me. Please. Me. To add to the confusion, no one is sure what exactly triggers this strange scene, nor does anybody seem to know its meaning or greater purpose. There's also a photo that can be found on the wall beside the opening screen, which appears to show a dark room with a pair of glowing red eyes. If this is one of Vic and Tor's parapsychological tests, I think I failed it, because I have no idea what the f is going on here. Blade and Soul. Thanks to Epic for submitting this discovery on the Oddheader Discord. Blade and Soul is a Korean fantasy martial arts massively multiplayer online role-playing game, originally released in 2012 in Korea and 2016 in the US, with Blade and Soul Revival launching in 2021. And with this upgrade to Unreal Engine 4, Epic noted for the first time some assets of the game were carried over that appear were never meant to be found, as Epic found by doing what they described as smashing their face into a portal repeatedly, then getting into the water, doing a special, and then jumping. They can make their characters swim through the map. However, Epic made a discovery that made them want to swim in the other direction, as deep below the Jadestone Village, they found a pair of green-skinned monsters with long talons that don't appear anywhere else in the game. At least, that we know of. Why these mysterious creatures are floating down here is unknown, and Epic confirmed that they remained down there lurking for years despite new updates being issued since, but has no idea exactly why or when they were initially hidden here so long ago. We might have to wait a little longer to see what eventually becomes of these zombies, but it doesn't look like they're going anywhere anytime soon. But here's to hoping we figure out the answer to this mystery before we end up looking like this. Kamaitachi no Yuru. Thanks to Panikin for submitting this mystery on oddheader.com. Kamaitachi no Yuru is a Japanese murder mystery visual novel released in 1994 on the Super Famicom, with later ports to the PlayStation, Game Boy Advance, and PC, and an English translation titled Banshee's Last Cry. The game's 2002 sequel is known for one of the most bizarre discoveries in gaming history, a series of nonsense messages I previously covered that seemed to be left in the game by a disgruntled developer who grew increasingly insane as they worked on the game, who seemed to be suffering from delusions and was being haunted by the character's deaths, which says there is no help for being cursed, and that there's still time for you if you haven't heard the voice. Though the easter egg explains that an employee was let go from the staff, it wasn't clear who exactly wrote this, but Panikin let me know there's another secret in the PlayStation port of the original game that can be activated by pressing a specific button during a specific line of dialogue that claims to be from the true author of the game, and that Takemaro Biko listed as the author in the credits as a fake person and hired actor made up by developer Chun Soft. The writer claims Chunsoft experimented with inserting some liminal messages in their games, and after sales dramatically increased with copies that contained the messages, extended their aim to brainwash children into becoming die-hard Chunsoft stands so that they could become a conglomerate of corporations that will take over Japan, and that the president of the company could become a god. The writer says this is not a joke, and that he's been the subject of torture he doesn't wish to speak of when he's tried to escape, and the only way to stop Chunsoft is to call a phone number and tell everything to his only friend who he can trust, and that the player must must hurry, because Chunsoft is on their way to kill them both, yet the message cuts off without revealing the phone number. If you ask me, this all seems a little extreme to protect some subliminal messages that essentially add up to buy more games, but considering Kamae Itachi no Yuru sold over a million copies, it kinda sounds like everything went according to plan. Maybe I'm gonna have to start doing the same thing. The Life Stage Virtual House. Thanks to Malice Maleficarm for submitting this through the Unheader Discord. Life Stage Virtual House is a 1993 3D-O house construction simulator that hits you right in the nostalgia with its vaporwave vibes as you build your ultimate 90s dream house. The game is surprisingly robust and advanced for 1993, and perhaps only because of its age and quiet, empty atmosphere, it comes across at times as somewhat discomforting. The game also features a number of pre-made environments that range from impressively detailed to completely bizarre, such as this sample environment that's apparently supposed to be a cave, but it's it just looks like a normal hotel. Until you find the way to the basement and find ghosts of women locked in cages. Wait a second, is this supposed to be a dungeon? I'm done here. Strange as though is this environment called Question Mark that when loaded up drops you into what looks like a vomit inducing acid trip. However, if you select the question mark in the Japanese version of the game, you would instantly be met face to face with more ghost women. Wait a second, is that blood? Yeah, for some reason the Japanese version of the game features blood that can't be found anywhere in the US release. Let's go through this door. Uh, 
Why is any of this here? Perhaps because of growing concerns in 1993. All of this was removed from the US release, seeing as Mortal Kombat launched the same year on home consoles with all of its blood removed from the original arcade version. Or maybe it wasn't included because why the hell would any of this be in a house building simulator? Unless this game was supposed to be originally endorsed as Ted Bundy's Life in the Dream House. Really hoping these weren't actual housing plans for anyone on the development team. Trepang 2. Thanks to Bobby the Bob for spinning this mystery on oddheader.com. Trepang 2 is an upcoming first person shooter planned for full release this year, which has a demo that can be played on Steam right now. While Trepang 2 is unquestionably a relentlessly dark game, clearly inspired by the Fear series, Trepang 2 doesn't dive too deeply into the outright supernatural horror territory of fear. At least, as far as things appear, as Bobby the Bob showed me that the demo was updated around July, and that there appeared to be a haunting secret that was added outside the boundaries of the game. As apparently if you were to use T-Mod to no-clip through this barricaded stairwell, you'd suddenly see a strange static effect over the screen as you climb to the top of the stairs, which at the top appears to have a strange, unnerving figure standing at the other side of a window, which when you slowly approach, throws up a loading screen and launches you in what appears to be the back rooms. The back rooms being a popular urban legend that's based on a single photo that circulates on the internet that was described as feeling off, that spread along with the idea that you had to no clip out of reality in the wrong places to get there. So this is the back rooms, huh? Oh my god, how far does this go? This is pretty spooky. Oh my god, what the f is that? It looks like there's someone else here. Some sort of creepy invisible entity of some sort. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Wait, uh, did that Mona Lisa painting just change? I'm going crazy. Let's kill some bad guys first. Gotcha. There we go. Hell yeah. All right, now that I got that taken care of. Yeah, I think I've seen enough. Oh my god. This thing goes on forever. I had no idea this went on for as long as it does. I just thought the hallways were randomly generated in front of me. How does this go on for so long? Honestly, this looks like this is all meticulously crafted. Yet my friend and hacker Slippy Sledge managed to find one more area hidden back here. And, uh, what the hell is this? Is this legitimately unfinished or is it just made to look like this? As if this couldn't have gotten more odd. I'm gonna guess by the state of things, this area isn't entirely finished, meaning this could only be a taste of whatever terrifying nightmarish horror is still to come in a future update. I think I'm gonna go ahead and turn off automatic updates for now. And thanks again to Mana for sponsoring this video. Mana is the perfect card for gamers that just released this summer. Everyone needs a debit card, so why not use the one that lets you earn points by just buying and playing video games? Created by gamers like you and me. For all your gaming and entertainment purchases, Mana gives you points back, which you can put into getting more gaming gear, gaming gift cards, and of course, more games. It also has an app which you can open an account by downloading it on the Google Play or App Store, where you can earn points just by playing games, completing quests, and connecting your gamer tags from your favorite games to the app, as well as earn points from subscriptions like Netflix. Netflix, Spotify, and Xbox Game Pass. You'll then be able to use your points on something like that upgrade or skin in a game that you've been dying to redeem. No matter your favorite game or streaming platform, Mana has discounts and rewards for you. Mana has a no-cost option, but if you sign up for Mana Pro for $120 a year, you get one year of Discord, Nitro, Fit Gamer, Surfshark, and more. That's a total yearly value of $540 for what you're likely already doing, which is buying and playing video games. As a gamer, why pay any other way? Plus, the card looks pretty badass, and is actually made of metal, which feels great in your hand. Download the app on iOS or Android by scanning my QR code or clicking on the link in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and if you know of any other disturbing discoveries in video games that you'd like to see me cover, submit through oddheader.com, come join the Discord, or even send me a shout through Twitter or Reddit. And thanks again to Slippy Slice for helping get the footage in this video. Feel free to subscribe to him down below as well. Shout out to Angel the Fox, Ash Photography, Andrew FM, Chad Biscuits, Dear Mid Crowley, Flex, Grow Ups, Ed Moffat, Eddie Toxman the Bleach Primid, Fox M Cloud 123, Leo Maurer, Miss Arctic Foxy, Rackman 22, Red Team Medic, Riley S, Robert Eisen, Rutmer is cute, Scaredies, Starcore 2, Sneaking J, Taryn Stock, Towerizer, Vincent, and Jan Baneer for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.